questions up to this point? No? Okay, so what does it mean to say that language is a discrete combinatorial system? Yes, Cynthia? Uh, that the elements used in sentences will still have their, their distinction, but they will work as a combination. Okay, yes. Right, so there's, there's two points. The first point is discrete, so that the elements that go into making up a sentence, they stay separate. They, they retain their own identity. You know, every word keeps its own identity and its own discreteness, its own separateness. But in combining with other words, these different separate elements then produce new meanings through combination. Right? And, and, th and because they, they're, they're able to stay separate and still produce these new meanings through combination, it leads to this incredible vastness of language, is what he calls it, right? There, there, there's so many different possibilities of language created through this, um, the fact that, that the elements remain discrete, even, and, and then you're able to combine it. What's another example of a discrete combinatorial system? Color is not an example of a discrete combinatorial system. It's a blending system because the colors stay separate. They don't stay separate. You know, you, you combine yellow and blue, it turns into green. You lose yellow and blue. They disappeared, right? Uh, so DNA is another example of a discrete combinatorial system, right? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. What does it mean to say that language has a phrase structure? Yes, Cynthia? Uh, so sentences are separated into noun and verb phrases? Yes. So um, basically the, the, the different elements of a sentence, even if there are lots of separate words, they all can be grouped together into, uh, into, into phrases that sort of simplify the entire structure of the sentence. You know, it's basically the noun phrase and the verb phrase, um, and where most sentences have this sort of two-part structure, noun phrase, verb phrase, yeah? or virtually all sentences. Okay. And how does the phrase structure of language create a link to thoughts? How do we get the link to thoughts? Cynthia, yeah. Uh, is this through universal grammar? Um, yes, I, so it is through the universal grammar. The universal grammar is, is really, it's, it's laying out this, this uh, phrase structure. Um, but th uh, the reason why the universal grammar does it is, is because the universal grammar is simplifying the sentences into these larger pieces but that, are, that are clearly related to each other, and it's those pieces that end up being the thoughts. Right, uh, and so, um, yeah. So, so the universal grammar is kind of like the, 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 the translator, I suppose, between the the, 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 the specific language itself and the thoughts. It's kind of it kind of mediates, right? But it, and it mediates by kind of reducing this whole complicated sentence into um, a few separate thoughts that you can kind of follow as 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 sort of the underlying thoughts that, um, that create the language or the, the sentence. Okay.